So we're out here in this dirty old shop today. We're gonna to try to get a quick oil change done on this John Deere 5045. It's getting to be closer to springtime and I need to get a lot of stuff done. Got some gardening to get in, got some mowing to do so that the ryegrass and winter grass can come on without anything standing in its way. So uh, I've got 500 hours on this tractor now, so this will be the second change. And John Deere says that uh, after that break-in oil, at 250 you can go 500 hours per change but i'm not that brave they say you can go 500 hours if you use their oil and their filter and don't run that low sulfur diesel in it uh so or actually actually that's not right if you do run low sulfur diesel in it and i do all that but i still don't trust a, that oil to last me that long so i'm fishing to do it because that's cheaper than a motor so uh, i'll crawl up under here and give you a quick rundown on how this goes so if you're sitting up in the seat, on your left-hand side is where this plug is. This one right here. It takes a 17 millimeter wrench to break that dude loose. And don't worry, it wasn't that loose. I done cheated before I started filming this to make sure I didn't have to get an impact wrench or a torque wrench or something to get it off. But wasn't bad. Now this thing holds nine quarts of oil. And when it comes down, I always manage to drop this plug in in my bucket, I'm gonna try to not do that this time, but it's designed in such a way that you're gonna get filthy taking it apart, so just be ready. Anyway, I hope that pan holds that much. Good news is, it held it all, and then had room to spare. I knew it was gonna do it because I've done this before. So come around here on, like I said, from the seat, you'd be sitting on the right-hand side and find you something that looks like this right up in the front of the motor, just behind the radiator shroud, and uh, find a 10 millimeter wrench. There's four bolts, two over here, one down at the bottom, and one kind of in a goofy spot up high. Pull them, pull that cover off, and that'll help you get to your oil filter. And uh, I'm a big proponent of strap wrench. They seem to go places that nothing else wants to go. And back that filter off, and this is where you mess up your floor right here. So here's the recommended juice for this thing. It's uh, a 1540 oil. They don't give it away, but they don't give away nothing at John Deere, so. But like I say, anything they're willing to warranty a motor over 500 hours on must be some pretty good stuff. So that motor will take nine quarts and you get two and a half gallons here so don't pour the whole jug in you'll be over full now along the way they have from the your model this tractor is which is a uh, 2018 they have changed this part number on this filter so if you're not sure what your your model is when you go in there to get it maybe you take your serial number or if you bought it from them they'll know but if you bought it second hand then uh, get your uh, serial number off this thing when you go to get your new filter so they'll know which one to give you because there's two different ones for that same size tractor. Now, I'm a proponent of taking these filters and pouring them full of motor oil before you ever stick them on the motor. That way it's already, it doesn't have a bunch of air in it that's got to be pumped out and running, a, running stuff a little dry. But since that's a, not a, this is a horizontal filter instead of a vertical, it's not really practical, so this one here is going on. I'm gonna put some oil in it, but it ain't gonna get full, fill slam full. And uh, we will pray that the good Lord takes care of this motor down the road for me doing this. So, um, like I say, after you put that filter back on, seal that, you know, put some oil around that seal too, so whenever it mates up there, it'll, it'll keep that filter from leaking. Anyway, right above where you screwed that filter on here, you find this old cap there, and that's where it likes to take the motor oil. Like I said, that's uh, nine quarts in there. Now, you think as long as I've been, as much crap as I've got collected around here, I'd have me a, a good filter with a hose on it that would drain there, drain in there, but I don't. And with this, if you've got a machine with a loader on it, it's gonna be right in the way of where you're trying to pour that oil in there, but I guarantee you it's a lot easier to fight that for a few minutes than it is to take this loader on and off just to change oil. So uh, get you a, fill, a funnel, wipe her down real clean so no trash goes in there. 
Find the best way you can fit it up here like so. I guess it'd help if I put the camera on what we want to look at. And then, like I say, nine quarts down the gullet. Make sure your plug's in, make sure your filter's snug, and you're ready to go. So when you get your oil in the motor, cap it back off. Oh, I tell you what, uh, that little that jug over there, right at the bottom of it down here, it's got an indentation around the bottom of it, and if you'll pour it down to what that says, that's the two-quart mark right there. So if you get it down to about right in there, I'm going to call that nine quarts. Anywho, cap her back off. And before you put your cover on your uh, on your oil filter, on that little plate down yonder, crank her up, check the oil. You may have to add, you may have to tighten up filters. and You're gonna be mad if you get, if you put that thing on, and then you gotta turn around and take it right back off. So this uh, fires hung up, and she's gonna probably knock a time or two. Let's we'll see if we did a good job. The oil pressure light went right off. It's a great sign. Ain't no oil puking out from under it. Also a great sign. She ain't knocking, she ain't smoking, she ain't belching. I think we'll live to fight another day. Anyway, that's almost that. We'll clean up and we'll be done.